the deadliest tornado season in decades. Towns ripped apart, hundreds killed. But from the depths of devastation, a chance to rebuild green. In the midst of that, we were blessed with a tremendous opportunity to become environmental stewards. What can be learned from Greensburg, Kansas, four years after it was destroyed by a tornado, it's not only been rebuilt green, it's a leader in energy efficient living. Plus, a presidential push for businesses to build green. Upgrading buildings for energy efficiency could save America's businesses up to $40 billion a year on their utility bills. And one very, very big building undergoing a monster energy efficiency makeover. New York's Empire State Building is being retrofitted, including its 6,500 windows, one at a time. This is Energy Now. Do it. 2011 marks the deadliest tornado season in 75 years, with twisters killing more than 500 people and leaving behind scenes that resemble war zones. From the Great Plains to Appalachia, Americans are struggling to rebuild their businesses, their lives, and their homes. Hello, everyone. I'm Thalia Shuris, and welcome to Energy Now. Each week, we look at the country's energy challenges and how we're dealing with them. This season's apocalyptic weather got us wondering how the thousands of Americans who survived this year's more than 1,300 tornadoes are going to rebuild and whether they're also contemplating the energy challenges involved. That same question extends to all new building and retrofitting too. How significant are efficiency improvements in terms of construction costs, future savings on utility bills and reducing carbon emissions? But imagine being forced to start from scratch by Mother Nature. The devastation and destruction have been mind-boggling. In Joplin, Missouri, a May twister killed more than 150 people as it wiped out one-third of the town. It's, it's just pure devastation. You just you, you, you can't believe it. April, tornadoes tore through seven southern states. Entire homes, communities, lives have been destroyed by this tornado today. Stay away from this damage. 200 people killed in Alabama alone. Even New England was hit. A tornado just blew through here on Union Street. Can you damage to your building? There's two houses down. When a rare twister touched down in Springfield, Massachusetts. People in each of those devastated places are now rebuilding. It's an enormous task that's agonizingly familiar to the people of Greensburg, Kansas, who found themselves in the same daunting predicament four years ago. That's when a terrifying mile and a half wide tornado struck in the middle of the night, destroying the entire town, literally wiping it out. But not only did Greensburg start over, rebuilding brick by brick, the townspeople decided to remake their city into an icon of energy efficiency, as Lee Patrick Sullivan tells us in this Energy Now Spotlight. This is the brand new energy efficient city hall here in Greensburg, Kansas, the hub of what's quickly becoming one of the greenest cities in the entire country. But to tell the story of how Greensburg got to this point, you just have to cross the street. You see this block right here? It used to be filled with buildings until four years ago when a devastating tornado changed this town forever. It is extremely important for everyone in the Greensburg area to move to shelter. Just 10 minutes after that warning, downtown Greensburg, Kansas took a direct hit from an EF5 tornado. Oh, tornado to the east! Huge tornado! Look at that! 11 people in Greensburg were killed. 95% of the town's buildings and homes were gone. An entire city wiped off the map. To think that everything's gone and try to get an image in your head of what that means, it, it's impossible when you see it in person. But before the sun set on that first day after the tornado, many people in the town were already thinking about starting over and rebuilding green. Your name is Greensburg. Here's an opportunity to, to distinguish yourself from any other small community. With the backing of then Kansas Governor Kathleen Sebelius and President Bush, Greensburg became a living laboratory of green living. But more than just recover, the Kansans who live in Greensburg are building green. It started with the 547 Arts Center, 
named after the date of the tornado. Stacy Barnes now works here as a director. The building creates 25% of its own energy from solar panels on the roof and three small wind turbines. The building at first glance sticks out like a sore thumb here in Kansas, but the prairie style architecture is actually appropriate for this area. So you went, you went back, back to nature, back to the roots of this, this Yes, town. and that's really what being green and sustainable is about. They're not new ideas, it's just using the things that Mother Nature's given you. And the conserving of those resources led the folks at the Green Building Council to certify the 547 Arts Center as the first LEED Platinum building in the state of Kansas. LEED stands for the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. And it kicked off a green revolution in Greensburg. The original green people are our ancestors. We're farmers. We're conservation value farmers. The city council passed a resolution that all government buildings more than 4,000 square feet must be built to lead platinum standards, the first such policy in the country. Greensburg City Hall boasts reclaimed wood from the town's destroyed power plant, and the leftover coal ash from that plant was also repurposed. And the concrete in all the building contains about 25% fly ash. Both the local John Deere dealership and the hospital are certified LEED Platinum. The local hotel is also built to LEED standards. All three have their own wind turbines providing close to 20% of their electricity needs. And as for private homes, all of them were built at least 35% more efficient than Kansas building codes require, with a full quarter of them being built 75% more efficient. And then there's the city-owned wind farm. Ten turbines on the edge of town putting enough energy into the Kansas grid to cover all of the electricity needs of Greensburg's 900 residents, including its newest resident, Stacy Barnes' son Truman. You know, he's going to get to go to the brand new school and I'm jealous of that. <laughs> oh yeah, the school. In three short years, this school system went from not having any buildings, blackboards or books to one of the greenest school buildings in the entire country. The $50 million project has two buildings on the campus housing K through 12, cutting the energy bill in half. A new 50 kilowatt wind turbine greets fans at their new football field. And, and these are old cut up t uh, tires. Yes, they are. So even, even your football field is recycled. It is recycled and it is, well, it's green all the time. And take a look at this gym. It's perfectly lit by natural light. We really like the fact we can have PE, we can have practices, and really never turn lights on during the day in a lot of these spaces. And the lockers? They're made from recycled milk jugs and soda bottles. They're huge. You can put two freshmen in them. <laughs> ah, sustainable hazing. Gotta love it. Did we think we were going to rebuild? Yes. Did we know what the scope of that rebuild would be? No. Did we have any clue of how much work it would be or how much it would cost? No, not at all. In total, Greensburg has eight LEED certified buildings. That's one for every 112 residents. Now compare that with other more well-known green cities like San Francisco and Seattle. And you see why this town is claiming to be the greenest in the country. Any chance you're going to drop the Berg and just be Green Kansas? I think we'll stay with Greensburg. That's the way it was named clear back in the 1880s, and that's who we are. In Greensburg, Kansas, Lee Patrick Sullivan, Energy Now. We went back to the folks in Greensburg and asked them how much money they think they've saved since rebuilding Green. They said it's actually hard to measure because the new buildings are just so different than they used to be. For example, the new hospital is now 2,500 square feet larger and before the tornado, listen to this, it had two computer servers, now it has 32. When it comes to homes, those who rebuilt with the same square footage say their utility bills have been cut in half though. It's fascinating. We talk about the power of tornadoes, but we don't really think about what that means in terms of the actual amount of energy inside a tornado. So we decided to check. Take a look at this Energy Now reality meter. There's very little energy. If you're talking about a typical tornado, that's rated at EF1. It packs about 10,000 kilowatt hours, enough juice to power a typical household for a year. That's according to the National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center. 
Now compare that to a typical hurricane, which is about 300 miles wide and boasts 10 billion kilowatt hours. Still, because a tornado is so much smaller in size than a hurricane, the energy density is six times greater, making it the strongest storm in nature. Still ahead. New York's Empire State Building, leaner and greener with a monster energy makeover. But first... We need a basic energy requirement across the country. Mixing it up over mandating energy improvements. Efficiency is not free and someone has to pay. The costs and who can afford the bills. How can we reduce our dependence on oil? Imagine if we could harness all this kinetic energy. Who is shaping our energy future? China will produce more than half the solar panels in the entire world. If you've got good quality batteries, you can then store the wind when there's no wind, store the solar when there's no solar. Energy Now is the only TV news magazine exploring our challenges. Hybrid technology has saved the military $250 million. It makes sense to make this shift now. Energy Now on ABC7. Along with weight loss, it's one of the many ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org. Welcome back to Energy Now. We just took a look at how the city of Greensburg, Kansas rebuilt itself after it was destroyed by a tornado four years ago to become what many people call the greenest city in America. But what will it take for other cities to build green? Can Americans do it on their own without having to rebuild after a natural disaster? Well, joining us for this week's Mix, Matt Peterson, President and CEO of Global Green USA, which promotes green building throughout the country. He joins us from Los Angeles. And joining us from Austin, Texas, is Robert Bryce, senior fellow at the conservative think tank, the Manhattan Institute, and the author of Power Hungry, The Myths of green energy and thank you gentlemen both of you for joining us I'm going to begin with Robert Bryce if I may and with Greensburg Kansas Robert it is a green sure. success story people are saving money on their energy bills can you possibly have anything against that <laughs> well that's a good setup question I suppose but uh, it, look the, there's no question that some of these building programs are very good I, I'm, uh, energy efficiency is a great thing but it, as your previous story mentioned about Greensburg, how was the program paid for? It was a $50 million program. Much of it came from state and, and federal taxpayer dollars. Uh, and I think that going forward, that's going to be the key issue for a lot of these building programs all over the country is who pays. And particularly, that's a particularly important point now, given the, the fact that state and, and local governments, as well as the federal government, are effectively insolvent. If you look at the numbers from the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities, the states had a, a combined budget shortfall last year of $190 billion. This year, budget shortfalls combined of $130 billion. And then over the next two years, they're facing uh, budget shortfalls o overall of nearly $200 billion. Add in a $14 trillion federal debt, I think you're going to see policymakers uh, at all levels of government saying, we simply, we can't afford schools, uh, we right. can't afford a lot of other things, then these energy efficiency programs or building programs are going to be uh, really fighting for dollars at every level. So Matt Peterson, some scary numbers there, and you had to deal with some numbers in New Orleans because you helped rebuild that, but not only was the Department of Energy involved there and FEMA, uh, Brad Pitt, the actor, <coughs> underwrote a significant amount. So what about the argument against Robert Bryce? Well, we have public construction programs going on in this country, uh, going all, all, on, all across this country. Schools are still uh, being built uh, with public, uh, publicly financed bonds, and construction uh, is happening all across in every community, in most every community in, in the country in some form or another. So the question is, do we want to build cheap buildings that are expensive to operate and leave behind a legacy that uh, is just going to require us to rebuild or invest significant resources to maintain these buildings, or do we want to build them right. Uh, and in the cases of disaster areas, we have an opportunity to rebuild them right from the first, uh, from the get-go. Well, in, in some ways, though, Matt Peterson, the, the, the question almost is, are people going to do this unless, if, if there's no natural disaster? Kind of a tough question. 
Oh, people who are building green uh, without any natural disaster all across the country as well. Uh, so I, I don't think it's, it requires it. It just means we're we going to build homes and buildings that are disaster resistant as well as uh, more energy efficient and healthier to occupy. What about that, Robert Rice, bringing in codes? For example, in Greensburg, Kansas, there is a city code that says any government building more than 4,000 square feet needs to be LEED Platinum certified. Are you comfortable with sure. those kinds of codes going forward? Well, I, I think that some of these codes make sense, but again, and, and I live in Austin, Texas, and there's a there's a now a, an ordinance that requires uh, energy efficiency audits for homes. But and all of that is good. But I, I my my basic point is that for all of these things, efficiency is not free, and someone has to pay. So is this going to, uh, and, and these codes well, may uh, save energy? Of, uh, well, of course not. But but there but what is the right level of efficiency and 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 who is going to pay? So will consumers have a choice in these matters to decide the level of efficiency that they want, or are these going to be more governmental mandates that are simply going to be uh, spread across all consumers with no choice? I think that that's a key question. Matt Peterson, what about should people have a choice? You talked about the California mandate, for example. Well, we need to create codes that are. Uh, 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 across the board require more energy efficient new buildings but the real uh, challenge as we look at reducing our energy use and making this country more resilient uh, in our in terms of our economy and putting more money in people's pocketbooks is increasing the efficiency of existing buildings. Joplin, Missouri was also hit by a disaster recently in a tornado. What would you say to Joplin? What should it do in terms of rebuilding itself and retrofitting the homes and, and buildings that managed to survive? Uh, where should that city go from here, Matt Peterson? Well, they have an opportunity to rebuild uh, disaster-resistant homes that are going to be uh, better able to withstand future extreme weather events, which are going to be more common in this uh, country and around the world uh, due to climate change. And so we need to prepare for the future. I mean, uh, it's, it, we're not going to work our way uh, with the failure of Congress and our elected leaders' uh, their unwillingness to act to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We're going to have to b rebuild a country that is more resilient to disaster events. Uh, and, and so there's an opportunity to also do it in a way that's uh, more energy efficient and helps that community be resilient in all sorts of ways. Robert Bryce, I guess I'll end the same way as I began. What can you have against that? Well, I have nothing. I mean, being against efficiency is like opposing air or something. I mean, everyone is for efficiency. Um, and, and by itself, it, is a, it, it can be a very positive thing. Uh, over the last 40 years or so, the U.S. is driving twice as many miles, has twice as many cars as we did in the early 1970s, and yet we're using about the same amount of oil as we did then. So we're getting more efficient overall, but we can't escape or cannot deny. We have to be very clear about what all of this costs and what is it going to mean for ratepayers. And let's be honest up front about these renewable mandates and the efficiency mandates to see what they cost consumers. The discussions will continue. Gentlemen, thanks to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, in Japan, nine companies spearheaded by Panasonic aren't just talking about creating green cities. They have plans to build a sustainable smart town. The Fujisawa SST is this week's Energy Now Hot Zone, and it's supposed to open in 2014. Solar power and battery storage systems will be pre-installed to power 1,000 homes with public facilities containing similar energy systems. It'll be built about 30 miles from Tokyo, and the plan is for the town to produce 70% less carbon emissions compared to 1990 levels. People will get around using and sharing electric vehicles and bicycles. Total cost, an estimated $741 million. Coming up, movie legends Gregory Peck and King Kong, their connection to energy efficiency. We'll explain when we come back. The American Lung Association is so important to me because they've been there side by side with the environmental community for decades in cleaning up the air in cities across America. We couldn't have done it without their expertise. They put a human face, the cost of air pollution, asthma, emphysema, lung cancer. They are the best resource out there, medical information, scientific information to help us clean up the air. Welcome back to Energy Now. 
We're taking a look at energy efficiency, which is far from a new idea. People have been talking about it for decades. Talking about it, yes. Doing something about it, maybe not so much. Call it efficiency, weatherization, whatever. Politicians and organizations like the Alliance to Save Energy and the celebrities they've recruited have been trying to get across the message that we have to stop wasting energy. Now here's an example in this Energy Then. Actor Gregory Peck in a video for the Alliance from 1979 and hey really, any excuse to run anything with Gregory Peck in it. Unless we're careful, this could be one of the darkest times in our history. Our country is facing serious energy problems. We can't wait for miracles. We've got to do something about it, ourselves. Last year, the energy we wasted equaled all the oil we imported. And that's shocking. We Americans do use a lot of energy. If we don't start using it wisely, we're heading for trouble. The Alliance to Save Energy asks every American family to save a gallon of gasoline each week, cut down on heat and air conditioning, and use appliances sensibly. Now, that's really no hardship. In fact, it will save you money. That was screen legend Gregory Peck. At a time when high oil prices, sound familiar, right, had Americans worried. The Iranian revolution had just occurred, and Iran had reduced its oil production. So the decrease in imports started a steady rise in oil prices from $15 a barrel at the beginning of 1979 to just under $40 a barrel two years later. And of course, those are prices that today are just a fond memory. President Obama has been pushing his own energy efficiency plans, including something he first outlined in February, the Better Buildings Initiative. It's aimed at making commercial buildings 20% more energy efficient by 2020. He mentioned it again just a few days ago while he was at the LED lighting company Cree in North Carolina. Upgrading buildings for energy efficiency could save America's businesses up to $40 billion a year on their utility bills. With commercial buildings guzzling almost 20% of all the energy used in the country, according to the government, overall savings could be enormous. The owners of one very special New York City commercial landmark have already taken that to heart. And as Energy Now's Josh Zepps explains, they're taking charge of their energy future. In the battle to turn skyscrapers green, where better to start than with one of the nation's greatest icons? The Empire State Building was the tallest building in the world for more than 40 years until the World Trade Towers eclipsed it in 1972. I'm working on a building. I'm working on a building. At 102 stories tall, it's home to more than 20,000 employees. I mean, just think about what that means, okay? A city of 20,000 people is no fly-spec one-horse town. It, it's a city that has literally thousands of buildings in it. And here, you have that same population in just one single building. That means an energy load of 10 million watts and a power bill of $11 million a year, which, believe it or not, is still even more than it cost me to fill up my car. Paul Road is the project manager in charge of turning this old vertical city into a modern model of green. It's funny, I look out at the skyline and I see opportunity here. When new megastructures pop up in developing economies, 21st century technology is built into them from the ground up. But the Empire State Building was built in 1931, when oil wells were popping up faster than a teenager's pimples. All it had to be was big. The building had been due for this massive five-year-long, half-billion-dollar refit anyway. The specific energy-saving additions are only costing about $13 million, and that's expected to pay for itself in just three years. The first step is making sure that heating and cooling always comes from the most efficient source, either wind energy credits or, on days where there's high demand on the electrical grid, steam. The next step is lighting. The Empire State Building used to have over 3 million incandescent light bulbs. Now, fluorescents have reduced lighting costs by 75%. And then, of course, there's insulation. In a city that gets as snap frozen and as meltingly hot as New York, every window is a liability that can hemorrhage heat. And you know how many windows this building has? If you answered lots and lots, you would technically be correct, although a little vague. The correct answer is 6,514. 
which means that workers have been coming in here to recondition 26,000 panes of glass. We realized that we could take the existing windows and, and recondition them on site, literally take them apart and put them back together again with a piece of film inside and charge with, a, with a, a gas mixture of argon krypton to provide better insulation value. Thanks to the new cutting edge gas chambers inserted between the window panes, the windows are four times better at insulation than the old ones. Ultimately, the retrofit is expected to reduce energy consumption by up to 38%, saving an estimated $4.5 million a year. On Thursday, the final component of the building's retrofit was announced. The building's 68 elevators are being upgraded to be faster and 30% more energy efficient. As they whiz up and down all day, regenerated energy will be captured from their movement and sent back to the building's electric grid. Russell Unger is the executive director of the Urban Green Council at the U.S. Green Building Council in New York. Well, the extraordinary thing about the Empire State Building is it's the Empire State Building. You know, everyone in the world knows this. So you took energy retrofits from being kind of a geeky niche thing most people couldn't relate to, and all of a sudden you're like, aha, it's the Empire State Building. So that natural light would come into the building. For Road, that's a big part of the plan using one of the world's most famous structures to promote energy-saving refits everywhere, lowering costs and consumption for entire cities. We've proven that it's economic, so now the, the goal is to just take the successes and start multiplying them out in the field, which we're doing. On the top of the Empire State Building in New York City, Josh Sepps, Energy Now. Over the next 15 years, green retrofits are expected to reduce the Empire State Building's carbon footprint by 105,000 metric tons. That's like taking 20,000 cars off the road. And finally, it seems like we really hit some nerves with last week's show on light bulbs. And here are some of the comments you sent to our website, energynow.com. B. L. Inry writes, Manufacturers of the fluorescent bulbs make wild claims that they last up to seven times longer. I have purchased and installed fluorescent bulbs and found that they burn out just as fast as the incandescent. Tim Hughes of Manassas, Virginia writes, I converted my house to CFL bulbs five years ago and I've yet to break or replace a bulb since then. The lighting is good and I'm saving money with reduced electrical usage. And David Hoyt of Watertown, Connecticut writes, Washington wants to force Americans to buy $10 light bulbs made in China that do not deliver proper light and are toxic. If I drop a regular light bulb, I do not have to run out of the room for fear of breathing mercury fumes. We really like to hear from you, so we've added a user feedback section to the front page of our website, energynow.com, to make it easier for you to reach us. Now that's right next to our web poll, and this week we're asking, what level do you think average national gasoline prices will peak at this summer? We'll have the poll results next week when we take a look at the issue of gas prices in the United States. That's at energynow.com. And that's it for this week's Energy Now. You can also find us on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. Search for us at Energy Now News. I'm Thalia Schurz. See you next week.